In this episode, I have a returning guest. His name is Gaten McKenzie, and he is the leader of one of South Africa's larger political parties called the Patriotic Alliance. We talked about former President Jacob Zuma and his new political party called MK. Then we moved on to how Gaten is fighting illegal immigration in South Africa and his stance on the conflict in the Middle East. Number one, there's no genocide happening there. Number two, no, so, you so, me out, so, let me answer so when, you. When children are starving, that's No, let genocide. me answer you. Don't tell me how I should answer you. But the main topic that we discussed, and this is actually the real reason I wanted Gaten to come down and speak with me today, is because on the 19th of February, 2024, a six-year-old girl called Jocelyn Smith went missing from her home in Saldana Bay, which is a small town in the Western Cape. Gayton has played a huge role in this investigation, and he even went down to Saldana Bay and met up with Jocelyn's mother and her boyfriend, who are the main suspects in this investigation. What was your first impression of her? In 10 minutes of meeting the mother, I knew that she's involved. There's a lot more information that will be coming out about that. But without further ado, I introduce, for the second time, Gaten McKenzie. How are you doing, Mr. McKenzie? What you been up to since the last time I saw you? Uh, I'm doing very well, Mr. Toss. I've been campaigning, 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 campaigning. What a boring life. <laughs> Actually, very exciting. I'm sure. I'm sure you get to meet pretty interesting people along the way. I tell you, you that, that's the most exciting part, actually, because you meet all kinds of people mm. and you learn so much from every person that you meet. So, I mean, just before this, just before we started recording, you were telling me about uh, Jacob Zuma. Yeah. And he saw that clip from our last episode where, where I asked you if you could beat up uh, like a Jacob Zuma or Malema or uh, Helen Ziller, John Stienaz and... And what, what, did, what did he say to you? Oh, he said to me, I saw you said you will beat up everybody else except me. He <laughs> says, because I would have beaten you up. <laughs> I said, yeah, dream on, old man. <laughs> the, the, reason, the reason I actually brought, wanted to talk about Jacob is because there's been quite a lot happening with him and MK in, yeah. the, in the news recently. Um, and I wanted to know, what is going on with his party? Are they, is, is he allowed to run for president? Is his party on the ballot? Well, firstly, his party is on the ballot. And secondly, uh, he's not eligible currently to go to parliament or to stand for political office uh, in government or occupy a political office in government simply because now a lot of people are blaming the, the IEC, which is wrong. The rules are the rules. The rules have been there before Jacob Zuma. The rules are very clear that you have to be out of jail for five years okay. out of jail to be eligible. Now, Jacob Zuma has not been eligible uh, to stay in because he's been out of jail for, he's not been out of jail he, for five he, years. He was in prison in 2021, I think. Yes, so it's not yet five years. But yeah. in the same breath, I must add that, you know, uh, I've been out of jail for like 23 years. Uh, so that's why I can stay in. For president. That's that's the reason I wanted to ask, was because I was curious. I was like, how can you run for president if Zuma can't run for president? I, I wasn't sure, so thanks. So I've been out yeah. of jail for 23 years. So yeah, I've, 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 I can run for several parliaments. <laughs> <laughs> but I also want to say, you know, it, it, this is my personal opinion. People, I just think that it's a hollow victory for the enemies of Jacob Zuma. It's a hollow victory. And the reason why I'm saying that is because Whoever wants to form a partnership with Jacob Zuma will have to give him a pardon. If you want to form a coalition, if you need his votes, you got to give him a pardon. When you give him a pardon, one of the conditions will be, if you want to form a partnership with him, one of his conditions surely would be, set me, give me a pardon, and when you give him a pardon, then all of that's forgiven and he can become president. Mm. I'm, I'm just saying that it's not such a big thing that people make it. Was, was he trying to form a coalition with another party? No, only when the results come out, we'll know. You okay. know, coalitions only really get formed after the election. But people must forget, that's one thing I see people don't talk about. Jacob Zuma went to jail for the very same thing that Kurz Becker did. Kurz Becker told the Jali, the, I think now it's the Jali Commission of Presidents now, told the Zondo Commission, I'm not going to appear before you. Chris Becker, the multi-billionaire that owns News24, Jacob Zuma, and a lot of people have not thought about that, went for the very same thing to jail that Kurs that, uh, that Kurs Becker what, didn't even get a slip on the wrist. So basically, Jacob Zuma has 
Wasn't there yeah. other stuff as well though? There was nothing. There was other but, stuff like what? Yeah, and I was looking into it. I've I have forgotten though, so I can't bring no, it up. No, you haven't yeah. forgotten. There's nothing. Mm. You've not forgotten nothing. There was absolutely nothing, nothing. Jacob Zuma went to jail because they said that he didn't go to the jail, to the commission to the Zondo Commission. Okay. And when Chris Becker was asked to go to the Zondo Commission, he said, "Go to hell." So people should never forget that. Uh, that I still say to you that. Jacob Zuma went to jail for nothing. Whether you like it or not, you know, that wasn't the... So you're saying that he went to jail for nothing because they couldn't prove? What no. He, because he's done it. I mean, he's he was corrupt. Is corrupt. I'm not going to... Uh, you don't have to say anything. No, I'm saying to you... There is you, probably plenty of stuff he could have gone to jail for. Why don't they go for him for that? Why don't, don't they know. go for him? I don't know. Jacob Zuma had 720-something yeah. charges against him. And you tell me you can't prove one? You see, we must not yeah. uh, come here and portray our feelings mm. or our wishes as fact. That's the mistake people make. Don't portray your wishes as fact. Yeah. I don't know is Jacob Zuma guilty of anything, but I do know the world that we live in. You got to prove. He who alleges, of course, should yeah. prove. They had alleged seven hundred and twenty something things. And they've not proven it. And I'm not saying Jacob Zuma's an angel. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. He was in prison, though. He was in prison for a few months. F for the very same thing that Chris Becker yeah. did. That, that, that they didn't give him a slip on the wrist. But that, yeah, that obviously disqualifies him. It says, yeah, it says, former, uh, it says former President Jacob Zuma has been barred from running in South Africa's general election in May. The country's uh, Electoral Commission, or IC, has not given a reason. However, his 2021 conviction and jailing for contempt of court would appear to disqualify him. That's from the BBC. Yes, no, that's true. Because yeah. Jacob Zuma is not MK. MK is a party running. Yeah. So Jacob Zuma is individual in MK. Who would run, um, I mean, who, who would take his place? Do you know? I don't know. That's an internal no decision. Maybe his son. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm joking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, another thing that I wanted to talk about just before we get into, I mean, the reason I actually wanted to bring you today is because of Jocelyn Smith was one of the bigger reasons, you know, oh, right. um, and, and her story and the, the work you've done uh, alongside uh, investigators and with, with that case. But uh, before I, this was just something I saw just now. Why is everyone so obsessed with Orania? I mean, I know Orania and I know you've visited Orania, right? What? What is it about Orania that fascinates so many South Africans? I think the uh, Orania is a, is a people like the unknown. People are curious about the unknown. And Orania is one of those unknowns. It's like prison. People are curious about jail. You're talking to the right, I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. And people are curious about Orania. Both are the yeah. unknown. You know, where, where people, and, and you know, Orania for me, there's so many parts of Orania that we don't know about. Well, let me give you five parts quickly. Number one, Orania has not stolen the land that they are on. They bought the land from government. I read on Wikipedia, and I don't know if it's true. No, it's true. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you fact here. Yeah, I didn't yeah, come yeah, here yeah. for fairy tales. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no I, I read that they did steal the land, but I have no idea. I they just didn't saw steal that the online. Land. Yeah. The land was bought by the government, okay. well, from the government. Yeah, yeah. I can even tell, I think they paid 1.2 million for it. Hmm. I speak under correction. But... I'm not speaking on the correction when it comes to buying the land. Number two, a fact about Orania. And people get emotional without looking at the facts. Yeah. Number two uh, about Orania is the fact that government had an out-of-court settlement with them. Government agreed with Orania that Orania can form their own municipality. An out-of-court settlement. That's, that, those mm. are facts that people hear for the first time really hear. Number three. Do I believe that places like Orania should exist? No. Number four, do I believe that uh, Orania is racist? Of course. It's a racist mm -hmm. enclave. Uh, no matter what they tell you that black people, that you have to identify with Africa. That's a nice way of telling you like blacks, fuck off. Because I did you see, know? I saw in an interview with one of their spokespersons or something, they were like, anyone can live here. But it's like, imagine being a black person or a colored person like moving to Orania, you'd be so singled out. It would be just No, you can't horrific. live there. You no, can't you even can't. move there. No. Well, they, 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 just, they just lack the conviction. Yeah. To say we don't want black people here. Uh, they should, uh, or, or we only want white Afrikaners here or whatever. They should be, have the courage of the conviction to get, to say that. Mm. 
But that's that. Those are the bad things. But there's also good things happening in Orania. Yeah, and that's what irritates a lot of black people. They don't want to hear bad things. Number one, Orania has got their own currency. Orania has got their own bank. Orania has got the uh, work for everybody working in Orania. Mm. Orania has got what you call it. Uh, uh, there's there's pride uh, in working. They are working there. Well, I, I guess they're all. The, the, the thing about Orania, I think, is everyone has kind of got the same goal. Everyone's yes. chosen to be there, and well, the majority of people have chosen. And it's to glowing, be there. you see. Yeah, and they're they're all the, from the same culture. They all have the same. They all speak the same language, and I think that's probably why they get on so well. Let me tell you. Yeah, uh, they all, all of them in Orania, and that is things that people don't understand is that that they have a vision. Now, once you have a vision and a goal, and they be, uh, so I'm not just going to bash Orania. And I can tell you something that might shock a lot of you. I've experienced more racism out of Orania than I've experienced when I was in Or- Orania. Mm. And maybe you say, ah, you gated McKenzie, but my guys walked around and they're not gated McKenzie. Nobody knows my security or my normal guys that, 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 that travel with me, my mm. marketing team. It might be different if you lived there, though. So, yeah. yes, no, definitely. So, what I'm basically saying to you, I said, the place is racist. Make no mistake about it. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying that we must not act like they're the only racist place. Yeah. And I'm saying to you that what I fear the most about Orania, let me tell you what I fear the most. I fear that Orania will go off the grid and will not have load shedding. And South Africa will have load shedding while Orania don't have load shedding. Uh, the rest of South Africa will have load shedding while Orania don't have load shedding and somebody will look from the sky and say, oh, I see it's dark there. Yeah, that's South Africa. But why is there light there? No, that's Orania. Where only the <laughs> whites stay. That's just something that yeah. that that I hope doesn't happen. Mm. And that's why we should vote on the 29th of May, Kenzie, so that we can get... So we can keep the lights on. So we can keep the, the not only the lights, that we should, we should fix our country. We should make sure that places like Orania doesn't exist where everybody feels one, we need to get together as white, black, Indian, and colored. Mm. And I think that is why my presidency is so important. Because I'm the only one that stands up and say that white people should stop feeling guilty for the sins of their grandfathers and grandmothers. The time has come where we hold hands and we build this country instead of just brainstorming and pointing fingers and say, your grandfather did that. Apartheid was a crime against humanity. But that doesn't mean we should not move on Mm. from apartheid. Another thing I wanted to get into, just one last thing before we go into uh, the Jocelyn Smith stuff, um, is I saw videos of you guys on the border. Yes. Um, chasing away illegal foreigners. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, it's quite I, a serious topic. I'm but, laughing, but really serious. But yeah. I, di- it just, I just found it like so funny in a way. I mean, it's, I think it's quite sad, mm. obviously, but it was just... It was like almost like a comedy skit with you guys like standing on the one side, the guys on the other side waiting for you guys to leave, um, and then you guys chasing them back. Um, that we have pushed back. And Mr. Kenny, we Kennedy. are now here, <laughs> and you can see where we are. As we are arriving, they were crossing, and we then chased them, and they went back uh, into Zimbabwe. You have seen the boats that are there. Our people jumped in the river to go and step those boats right there in Zimbabwe because those boats are being used to transport illegal stuff into our country. Uh, Dynamites are being uh, uh, transported. Uh, uh, Drugs are being transported. Illegal cigarettes are being transported. Guns are being transported that are meant to kill South Africans. So we are are serious about uh, dealing with the issue of illegal immigration. We are not just talking. We want to show South Africans uh, that we are serious about this as a matter of our manifesto policy that we might- so tell me how this came about so i mean the patriotic alliance is on the one side of the river and i'm guessing these guys are pretty much all zimbabweans right yes trying to cross illegally into south africa all right is it that easy to cross into south africa let me tell you this is one part you saw a tenth of, 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 of what was happening there the patriotic alliance wanted to showcase to the world that we have no border. We are already living in a borderless South Africa. Mm. Now, and I'll tell you what's the dangers of that. It it takes seven minutes, if you walk slowly, 
to cross into this country. We've we have seen people, old people, young people, if an old lady can cross so easily, how easy is it for young people to cross? We saw people coming in in the morning and then walking back in the evening to sleep in Zimbabwe, but they work in South Africa. And they just walk through the border. Now, let me tell you what is the downside of that. If somebody comes in here and they kill you, they kill you. They're undocumented. They didn't go, come into South Africa through the right channels. They're illegally here. There's a 0% chance that those people will be that, the, that those people will be caught. A 0% chance. So people say, yeah, they, they just want a job they, until they kill your mother. Because it's not all Zimbabweans that are honest. It's not all Nigerians that are honest. Mm. In those people were not just crossing, as you say. They were having boats. Why would you have boats if you can walk through? My guys were walking through. I was the asking that, that's what the boat yeah. is for cigarettes, yeah. for dynamite. To Why blow up, dynamite? To blow up ATMs, number one. Number two, to blow up gold underground to, 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 uh, for illegal mining under the people's houses and people's houses are cracking. So I'm saying to you that illegal immigration, the Patriotic Alliance are the only party that is as serious about illegal immigration, that we not just write it down as a manifesto point. We went to go and spend a week on at the border, sleeping there, making sure. Today there's action being taken only because the Patriotic Alliance woke up the Border Management Authority, woke up the government, woke up the people and say, look at our country, terrorists can go into Zimbabwe and then come through, use Zimbabwe as an exit, as a, as, a, as, a, as a pass through to get into our country. A country with no border. There's no country left if you have no border. And we need, and that's why when I become president, I'm going to build a wall like Trump. And you will know this, this, this lekker party, this nice picnic you see here will not happen under my government. And how long is the stretch that they can cross over? The stretch that we saw there was two kilometers. We okay, so it's not that big, hey? No, 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 no. It's just one section. Well, that's just one section was yeah. two kilometers. But they can come in from different sides. I mean, like, you know what I found curious when we were there is I couldn't understand why all these trucks were standing on along the way. I'm like, why is this? Because I understand logistics and transport. Like, why is this truck standing like this for days? The reason why the trucks were standing like that is because we were there. The cigarettes couldn't come over, the, the illegal cigarettes or or the whatever clandestine they were moving. They couldn't get it over. Mm. So we disrupted the supply chain of anything illegal that they would bring into the country. And did you catch people with... Oh, we got a lot of them. What did what did you ca- find in the boat? We, we gave them over to the soldiers. We got people with cigarettes... Uh, uh, we got somebody uh, 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 with, uh, I just call those things, uh, spears. You know what he's going to do with the spears. So, mm. so we, there's a lot of people that we saw, we ran away, but we brought it to a standstill. People think we were there to stop illegal foreigners to come in the country forever. No, we wanted, the reason we were there, here's a perfect example. People will now know that when they sleep at night, they are not safe. You just wanted to show it. I wanted to bring attention to it. Mm-hmm. I wanted to highlight it. I wanted people to know we got to do something about it. And I'm saying to you today, I feel very strongly about illegal immigration. I feel if you want to visit South Africa, you must come with a proper paperwork. And while you wait for your paperwork, you must wait in your country of birth until you get your paperwork ready. You, if, if our authorities are taking long, so be it. I I uh, applied for a visa to go to the Rugby World Cup myself. Do you know when I got my visa? No. I got my visa the night before the final. So you had to fly out? The afternoon, yes. The the afternoon before the final. Mm. I got it at around 2 p.m. And there were still people waiting for their ones. So I didn't say, oh, let me smuggle myself into Paris. And while I'm there... I'll complain about how long they take to give our visas out. Yeah. I didn't do that because rules are rules. Laws are law. I am your guy. I'm going to bring law and order back. If you kill people, I'm going to kill you. You did a podcast the other day. How easy people just talk about killing on your podcast. I'm how Mark do it, my baru. He's talking like he's going to kill a chicken. Now I will kill him like a chicken. 
That same boy that said to you on the show, ik mag dood. Ik zou voor jou dood mag. Ik kom voor hem dood mag. When What I'm the president. Mean? I'm going to kill him. If I'm the president. If you, I Which said, boy your, are you talking about? On your podcast, you had some 28 member there. Was it, a, was it like out in Manenberg? Yes. Was it a young boy with blonde hair? Yeah, he was just talking so easily about debt. Yeah. How they'll kill people. I was watching that podcast. You know that kid's in rehab now? That's, that's very good. Yeah. He better go into rehab a, a, because a, when a, I become president, he will be in the mock. A Christian, a Christian group came and collected him. And, That's um, very good. And took him. He's actually doing amazingly, it seems. It seems. That's very yeah. good because what I'm saying, yeah, but yeah. my point I'm trying to make is how easily you would speak about killing. I know. I mean, everywhere I go, I'm shocked by it. I mean, now, that is not just what you have highlighted, what's really happening. They kill people's children like it's nothing. But when I come into power, I will kill them. I will hang them. Because once, if you don't want me to hang you, you should not kill people. Then we'll have peace in the land. You know, that is what that, what you just said was the thumbnail quote of the last podcast. I will kill them. I will hang them. You said yes. that exact same thing last time. It shows you I'm serious. I didn't say, I don't change my story. Yeah. I'm saying to you, I will bring law and order back in this country. I will bring law and order back. I love it. I'm saying to you that you can't go around. We've got 80 murders a day. Yeah. How is roughly, that right? Yeah. How is that right? I hear people are saying there's an old white lady, two white ladies that asked for a meeting with me the other day. They said, Mackenzie, you are so wrong. We like you, but you are going to kill. When you hang people, you do know that you're going to hang innocent people. Do you know that innocent people are going to die, Mackenzie? I said, ma'am, innocent people are already dying. Farmers are being killed and slaughtered on the farms. Are those people not innocent? If I hang a thousand people and there's one that maybe might have been innocent, God will forgive me. The one thing that shocks me is you can ask like almost any security guard, like a car guard on the side of the road in Cape Town CBD, right? A lot of them have killed people. It's like insane to me the amount of people that have murdered other people in South Africa. Because I often talk to guys and I know a lot of the, the car guards and stuff are ex-gangsters. Um... And like everywhere I go in South Africa, if you just ask someone, they'll tell you. It's like crazy how many people, no, how, how many murderers they were. Let around. me explain to you about, about a person that, is ha that had half our problem. It's a guy called Niap Bukele. He's the best president in the world. Niap Bukele is the president of El Salvador. They had 40 homicides, they had 40 murders a day. Until Niap gangsters ruled the streets, like here in South Africa. Nia Bukele became president. Gentlemen, do you know how many murders they have a day now? Probably zero. They got one a year. And they catch whoever that one that commits a murder. Do you know that it is the second safest place in the whole world after Canada? Do you know that there's gangsterism? He has taken on the gangsters. And I'm going to <laughs> declare war against the gangsters. I'm going to finish them. I'm going to finish the mafias, the petrol mafia, the coal mafia, the home affairs mafia. You're probably going to have to go after a lot of your friends then, eh? Well, my <laughs> friends, I don't, let me tell you something. I don't care. I will go if my mom was a member of the coal mafia, I would have gone after her and I loved her more than anybody in the mm. world. When you take the position of leadership, you don't have friends that is doing wrong things. You don't have friends that they're selling drugs. Mm. You, they, you can't be fighting drugs and call somebody selling drugs your friend. Yeah. He becomes an enemy instantly. South Africa has one chance on the 29th of May to vote for a guy that will finish the mafias, that will finish the, the murderers, that will finish the, the ritual murder killings. I am your guy. I will bring law and order to this country. And I will not mess around. Mm. I'll make you a quick example. To show you, I wasn't, I'm not even in power yet. A white lady is pregnant. My lawyer's friend. They get hijacked in, Joy, in the city of Joburg. They get hijacked in the city of Joburg. They take the BMW. They kick her in the stomach. A pregnant woman. I tell my lawyer, he's crying. He wants to leave the country. I said to my lawyer, I will find them. I will find them. The Hawks are look, were looking for them. Everybody's looking for them. I was looking for them too. It was my friends. I found them in three days. 
How found though? the car. How? I did my investigation. I'm from the street. The same way I'm going to yeah. fight crime. So do you I, have a lot of... I possess yeah. a skill that you can't get in university. Well, you're connected to the underworld, no? Not, I'm not only connected to the underworld. I'm from the underworld. Yeah. So I know how the underworld operates. I don't need to call somebody in the underworld. I understand how mafias operate. I found him. I found the car. I caught the guy. The guy's name is Devil. Devil is the king of hijackings in Joburg. I fucked him up at that moment when he didn't want to release the car. I took him to the cops. <clears throat> the cops arrested him. I went to court. They found other number plates of other women that were hijacked. I went to court. He was scared even to face me. He was scared. The, the, the hawks came to me for two reasons. Mm. First, they said, how did you get this, guys? Second reason, the guys like saying, oh, I'm scared of Mackenzie. He should be scared of me. Now, the point I'm trying to make is I went to court and he was found guilty of hijacking. So I'm not just talking these things because I'm on a podcast. I'm a crime fighter. Well, I've seen, I've seen you've been hitting the streets recently. I yes. mean, I saw this, I, this one was funny. I thought you went into a, a shop. I think it was like a, guy, a Pakistani guy that yeah. shop and you saw baby food that was expired. Yeah. And you got your guys to take all the baby food out of the shop. I was saving the, the lives of our babies. I asked him one question on that same clip. I said, would you give your child this? Mm. If he had said yes. He was so scared of you. <laughs> he should be. Yeah. And he said, no, he would not give his child. Now, if you can't give your child that. Don't sell it then. Why do you give other people's children mm. that? That is, say, is law and order. They make their own coke. They make their own grandpa. They, they, what they are doing is they are terrorist network, funding terrorism through the guise of tax shops. South Africa is the chief funder through tax shops of terrorism, proven, not by me. The U.S. government told us that they have undeniable evidence that these people, funding terrorism. The tax shops? All the tax shops in South Africa. <laughs> they are terrorist cells. <laughs> it might be true, but it just sounds funny. No, it, it just is sounds true. funny. See, I don't know. I don't so know. what I've I'm saying to you, it's not, it, it might be funny now until they blow up this, pot, this building that we are sitting in. That is no longer funny. That yeah. is a funeral, a different F. That is a funeral. Yeah. No longer funny. So, okay, I want, I want to move on to Jocelyn Smith, right? So for those that don't know, and I, I don't know how people wouldn't know um, if you live in South Africa, but on the 19th of February, 2024, a little girl named Jocelyn Smith. Is it Jocelyn or Jocelyn? Josh. Her father's because, name is, is Josh. Okay. So it's named after her father. But I, I was wondering because every mm. different media outlet reports it differently. It's Jocelyn, Jocelyn. They keep no, it's switching. Jocelyn. Jocelyn. Because it's, she's named after her father. Okay. So a little girl uh, named Jocelyn went missing from her home uh, in Saldana Bay. I actually don't think she was at her home at the time. I think she was out playing with friends. But um, she went missing um, from Saldana Bay. And um, yeah, since then, there's been this massive manhunt of people trying to find her. And I saw you on the ground also looking for her. So just to lay out some context... And I mean, I know I kind of just described she's a six-year-old girl that lives in Saldana Bay. But do you know, I mean, you've spent time with people in that area that knew her. Who was Jocelyn Smith? I think Jocelyn Smith is any other kid on the Cape Flats, any other kid in Heidedal, any other kid in Galvindale, any other kid in Wentworth, any other kid in, in Alexandra or Soweto for that matter. Jocelyn grew up in absolute abject poverty. Jocelyn Smith is the child of drug addicts. So you're saying her mom is a drug addict? Yes, and her father is a recovering drug addict. And her ex her stepfather is, is a drug addict. Jocelyn Smith lived in a one-room shack. Jocelyn Smith then disappeared. Mm. Uh, on day two, I got involved to come and help. So you were there on the 20th? Yeah. Or the 21st, roughly? Yeah, roughly. Yeah. I came to come and help with the search. It was on the 20th. Mm. I came to help with the search. 
And I went there, like any other person, I also got to know that she's uh, the mother, the member of our party. The mother follow, is a supporter of the Patriotic Alliance. Yes. So I even had more motivation to meet her mm. during the search. What was that like? Before you found anything out, before anything was, was in the open, what, did, what was your first impression of her? My first impression was, before I even met the mother, was like, what's happening here? Two cops and one detective are helping with the search. This is a child that's missing. That's actually a big turnout, though, in South Africa for a missing child. It, oh, definitely. And then I realized that I asked the cop, how many of these cases, the detective, how many cases of this have you done? And he said, yeah, he had one where the child died. He found the body afterwards. And so I, I realized this man has zero experience when it comes to what he's supposed to be knowing. Yeah, I'm not a cop, but I know there's certain steps you have to take when a child gets missing. And those are in the book. What should happen? <clears throat> and none of that has happened. I then met the mother. In 10 minutes of meeting the mother, I knew that she's involved. I knew she's been dishonest. Oh, I knew, I, at first, my initial thought was she's protecting somebody. I thought she's protecting somebody that is part of this whole thing. Mm which I thought was a stepfather. So you, you didn't think that she had a hand in it? You thought maybe she was protecting someone else that At did first, it. I thought she, you know, for me, whether you had a hand in it or whether you protect the person. It's the same thing. It's the same thing in my book. Mm. And and Jocelyn's mom then, I then realized, here's a person that should be a person of interest. And I started asking questions. Well, yeah. you went out for lunch with her, didn't you? Yeah, no, that was a few days after. Okay. I started questions, then I realized I need to win a favor because this woman knows much more than what she's letting on. I also picked up that she's uber intelligent. She's very smart. That's one of my first thoughts I had about just interacting with her. I then realized that there was five, four people in the house where Jocelyn disappeared. Four was in the house, in the yard, or whatever you call it. All four of them had a different version of what happened. Now, that's very strange. If we sit here and I do this, there's two of us here. Uh, we can maybe have a different version. No, you use your right hand. You didn't use your right hand, you use your left hand. But if four people are talking different thing about the same serious happening, and that my antenna, my antennas just went up and said, something is not right here. Mm. Long story short, Jocelyn's, I then spoke to the cops. I tell them, guys, you got to open your eyes. Here's your suspects, these people. So was no one even thinking it, she no might one. have anything to do with it? No one. No one. The next moment, I managed to get from the, the police. I heard the police are closing the, 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 the case. They're stopping the search. Well, I'm like, no, it can't be. No, you, I told my counsel, I know you just come with the rumors here. This is not a time for rumors. It can't be. Then the mayor of Saldana, Leon Truta, wrote a mail saying the investigation is going to be stopped. For what reason? They can't find her. After how long of looking? A day or two? Uh, uh, four days. <coughs> now, what you must understand is standard practice. When a child gets mercy in our communities, it becomes a file. I then wrote a letter to Ellen Wundy. I asked him <clears throat> publicly. I said, Mr. Wundy, please intervene. Send your resources. He didn't answer me. He answered the mayor of Saldana, which had a replica letter. He said, we're going to send this, this, this. After... The you asked for helicopters and drones. Yes, drones, boats. And, people uh, on the ground. The, the, yeah. The, but we kept on looking. Then I asked them to have a lie detector test. This is where everything turned. I asked them to have a lie detector test on the mother. Mm. I insisted on that. The next day, they, and everybody in the house, the next day they came back, they said, she passed the lie detector test. But when I met her, she was as high as a kite. Now, I know what tech does to a lie detector test. Your hormones are all over the place. Your heartbeat is all over the place. So mm. it's very difficult to see if a person lies. Well, I was I was actually watching, I just started watching a show called Homeland. Have you ever heard of it? Yes, I know the show. So I was watching that last night and they were doing a lie detector test on 11 different people that were suspected of handing someone a razor blade to, to hurt themselves. And 
the one guy was just flustered. He wasn't even high. He was just flustered from something that happened earlier. And already you could see it looked like he was lying or telling the truth. It was completely false read, yeah. And then I said, no. And then I, uh, through my contacts, I made contact with the presidency. And I said, and they said, no, they'll send Begit Kale, the minister of police. And Begit Kale came. And I asked him, can you retest them? But this time they need to be sober. And they did retest them. And when they retested them, I think they retested them the Saturday. They didn't tell us the result. The Sunday, I could see by their actions, these people want to escape today, the mother and the father, mm. the mother and the stepfather. What I did, I then took them with my guys, we booked them in a hotel. The Monday when the cops got the lie detector test result, the cops then asked us, we can't find them. Do you guys maybe know where the mother and stepfather is? The cops. We said, all right, fine, we'll go show you. Go to this room, they're there. This is the number we got to them. We were guarding them the whole night. Did you have someone following them? I had my bodyguards, all my bodyguards. I was going around without security. That's, and so that they can look after. I just had one or two security with me. The rest of my guys were there. Mm, for those that don't know, Gaten rolls deep with security. Every time, well, this time <laughs> and the last time I saw him, he's had at least five to seven bodyguards. <laughs> <laughs> Politics is a dangerous game. I'm sure, yeah. yeah. And when, when Jocelyn, all the suspects they have there, we pointed them out to them. We made sure that it doesn't become a file. The helicopters came out because Gaten McKenzie and the community of Middle Post was not giving up on this case. Mm. Because Ombiza wasn't giving up. Because Sheikhs wasn't giving up. We were not giving up on this case. Hence, you see, the counselor didn't give up on this case. And that's why you see there's so much interest in Jocelyn. Because in the time that we're looking for Jocelyn, people think we're just worried about Jocelyn. Jocelyn is that, has become the face of all our missing children that nobody... I spoke to a mother in Bloemfontein, her son, Eswin Simmons, been gone for 10 years. The last time she heard from the cops was the day when she reported him missing. Was this the kid that you said that you would, you've promised to help find one day? Or but, no, no, there's another you, one. Okay, I, I no, was no, reading about that I last have night, files yeah. and files and files of kids that we now, that I'm talking to private detectives, can I pay you, can you do mm. this, look for this kid so long, because it's overwhelming. We had a kid yesterday, one wild lady was, a kid was gone. We sent out the whole team to go, and then the kid made contact when she heard we are looking for her everywhere. We, last week, a few days, four days ago, a kid was missing in Annadale. We sent out more than two, three thousand people to look for the kid. The kid appeared after load shedding. Was people had leaves put leaves in her ears. She couldn't hear when it was all this. I mean, I was in Manenberg the other day filming a documentary, and um, while I was there, police were going around with the mother in the back of the car looking for a missing child. Yes, because now it's no longer a file. Yeah. You have to look for a child because the Patriotic Alliance will rock up there and will make people say, we're making it politics about politics. We're using this child for political reasons. Like they don't know that politics decide, decided the helicopter shouldn't come out. Politics decided to close the case. Politics decides how many cops get deployed. Politics decide everything regarding our everyday lives, basically. Yeah. I went there, what stopped other political leaders to go and search on day two? We all read about it on Facebook. We all heard about it sometime. What is stopping them till today to come and help us search because the search for Jocelyn continues? What is, we don't have the same financial power. What stops them to put in a 10,000 rent or a 2,000 rent reward? Mm. I've put 1 million. No questions asked. Well, before we get to that, I want to just talk a little bit more about the suspects and the story, right? Right. So... The suspects are Kelly Smith, Jocelyn's mom, um, Jacqueline Apollos. Buddha, yes. Buddha, who is Kelly's boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, Steveno Ryan, which is a friend of the family, yes. I think. Um, and there was another one. I think the new suspect is uh, Laurentia Lombard. Rens, yes. Uh, I don't know how who, sh who she's connected she with. Is, she's connected with another guy, Yanda. So what's happening here? And then there was the, the traditional healer, uh, Pumza. She's innocent. She's I, innocent, eh? I said it before there was the root of matter. 
I said it before there was the rudimentary. matter. Because they were like, I think the community, which we haven't really spoken about, the community, when they heard of the news of Jocelyn missing and they started getting media attention, the community were storming down people's houses, weren't they? I mean, <laughs> they were trying to get into Kelly's house. They were trying to, they were at the police stations. They were everywhere. They were protesting. Yes. They were forming massive search parties. I was there. I was leading that. And how many people turned out from, from that area? Oh, thousands and thousands. That community of Saldana. They came out. People came from as far as Cape Town. People came from as far as Joburg to come and help with the search. So that one is about an hour and a half away from here. An hour away, the, depending on how you drive. Up, from up the West Coast yeah. Road, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, for, for what I'm saying is that I've never seen this. The suspects that we handed over to the cops, day three. The cops, day three or day four, day five, I can't remember. Uh, the, the cop says they don't need them. They're not suspects. All those people are in jail today as suspects. Maybe we would have found Jocelyn if they acted the way we acted. We act fast. The community are the real heroes. We handed out every suspect. There's one main suspect the cops are, are not charging yet because he has opened a case of kidnapping against me. Because I took him to the police station. I actually took him to the police station to save his life because on my life, I had a life, I was on Facebook Live. And one of the suspects, Stefano, said, this man bought the child for Muti. And as a leader, thousands of people were watching. I think 24,000 people were watching that. On your Facebook Live? On my Facebook Live, life, yes. And this, I was one of them. Yes. And, and that boy said, unprovoked. He said, Ayanda took Jocelyn. As a leader, I knew what was, for, was, was to follow next. The community is going to go for him. They're going to kill him, and we will never know what happened to Jocelyn. I rushed there. I, my guys took Ayanda, and they took him to the police station. I did it to save his life, actually, and also to know the truth. When he got to the police station, the DA, Regan, which is the provincial... Regan Allen, or yeah, Allen MEC, Regan. Allen Regan, who is the provincial MEC for safety and security rushed to Saldana to say, he kidnapped you, open a case against Gaten McKenzie. The DA then had a press conference. They've never had a press conference about Jocelyn. They had a press conference. And say, you know, Gaten, this is a businessman, and Gaten kidnapped them. Who kidnapped somebody to the police station? I must be the dumbest kidnapper in the history of dumb kidnappers. I kidnapped somebody to the police station. I still go back to drop him at his house. What type of kidnapper am I? But they played politics. And, and Renz, you ask who Renz was. Renz is the one that confessed now everything to the cops. She said how they sold Jocelyn. She said who bought Jocelyn. What, well, tell me what happened. If yes. you, if, can you tell me what happened? Yeah, I can tell you. Yeah, I was, actually haven't heard. She said Jocelyn got missing already the Sunday. The mother met with the son Goma the Saturday. The transaction happened the Sunday. The mother jumped in the car with Jocelyn. They drove for, I think, 100 meters. The mother jumped out, the Sangoma went with Jocelyn. Then the next day, they reported the, matter st the child stolen. I thought you said kidnapped. the Sangoma was innocent, though. No. The person, you asked me about Pumza, the person, yeah. they got and they alleged she's a Sangoma. She's innocent. She's not even a Sangoma. Oh, okay, okay. Right. That's a different Sangoma yes. you're talking about. That's not what Renz is talking about. It's not what I'm saying. Mm. That's Renz's version. Okay. When the community went to Renz initially, two days after Jocelyn disappeared, she said, oh, no, I did send Jocelyn to the house on the Monday. So there's two versions. The version she gave the police and the version she gave us on the live, the live is still there. Stephanie was in the house, said she sent Jocelyn at a certain time. She said, no, she didn't. So these people are all talking different versions. Yeah. The father, a stepfather of Jocelyn, also has a different version in his time. The mother, when I asked, when, my, when we befriended them, taking her to the spur, now I've seen three things to show you that woman is not innocent. Number one, there's no mother in the world. I said with that woman, She's jolly, she's laughing, and I first thought maybe that's what people, people uh, shock. People act Sometimes differently. people act funny when there's yes. trauma, yeah. So trauma makes people act differently. So I'm like looking at her like, 
having hot chocolates with us, laughing yeah. and stuff like that, and talking of is Jocelyn is already dead. I only have two kids left. I'll pick up on those small things. But for me, which was the second thing, but I'll tell you what, what shocked me to the core. The second thing was when there's four things that happened with Kelly. The second one was she didn't ask one of our people to stop searching for Jocelyn. We must just accept Jocelyn's fate. She That's asked six. Bizarre. Because usually with parents that are grieving, I mean, they'll never stop looking. They'll never. never. That's the second thing. The third thing about Kelly. I got the temple boys to perform. And when the temple boys was performing, she started dancing to the beat. You got them to p perform, perform where? At one of the search uh, parties? One of our, no, there was, there was a, f f where we want to bring awareness for Jocelyn. Okay. Where the church, church, and I said for the kids, they're so traumatized because they like the super band. For, for small kids. Mm. And, and all the small kids, I said, come so that for the trauma, that they can see the heroes, temple boys, because they yeah. love the temple boys. Yeah. And when the temple boys were performing for the kids, she started dancing. I was like, oh, no, no, this can't be in my dreaming. But here's the, here's the shocker. I call my bodyguards because they're guarding them. I said, tell her I want to interview the father, the stepfather. I'll be there at 2 o'clock. On my way there, my, my bodyguard phones me. He says, boss, there's a problem here. He says, we have been standing here and we told the father, the stepfather, uh, that Mr. McKenzie would like to interview you and ask you some questions. And she said, he said, yes, no, that's fine. And she said in front of my bodyguards to him, you must, when you look at the camera, you must take out a tear. You must act like you're very sad. My bodyguards was there. They, you know, it takes a lot but of But you shock. said she was smart. She sounds like an idiot. No, she, let me tell you something. Even the smartest people amongst us, even yourself, you're smart. You've done many idiotic things. Not like that, though. I mean, Well, you've never had your child mercy. No, I know. So that's what I'm saying. I'm saying to you that what happened, the reasons why she did that, mm. I consider myself smart, but I was caught by the cops. The criminals do pretty dumb shit. I, that's some pretty things that I look back like, if I didn't do that dumb thing, they wouldn't have caught me, for instance. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I've also been caught by the cops. Yes. <laughs> and you're not a dumb guy. So I was what dumb I'm back saying, then. <laughs> that was, you're making my point for me. You yeah. did a dumb thing. But, yeah, yeah. And then here's the one for me that's just out of this world. That I've, Kelly told me she's not a person that shows emotion. She told me that. Mm. And I was defending her and said, guys, some people. And then the cops wanted to separate her and her boyfriend. Boyfriend. Yeah, I read I've about I've never this. heard a woman cry like that. I have got a voice message on my phone of her calling me and crying. Calling my bodyguard and he recorded her and, and he sent it to me. So all I'm saying is that Jocelyn has blown open police incompetency. Jocelyn has blown open the fact that nobody's searching for missing people in this country mm -mm. except the charities. Jo Jocelyn's case has blown open how high-profile people are part of this ritual multi murders. Uh, I actually, so I was speaking to someone the other day who's an expert in true crime, and she said that multi murders are very rare. She said they are like in exceptionally rare. It doesn't happen that often. No, she's talking nonsense. For as long as there are people using... And multi murders for people that don't know is, I think... Ritual killings. Ritual killings, and they use like body, different body parts yes. uh, for uh, different ceremonies and healing uh, in, in like uh, traditional healing in South Africa. Yeah. What is rare about that is the rest. Nobody gets arrested for that. So you're saying it happens a lot more than people are caught oh, yeah, five, doing it. Every five hours, somebody's missing. So yeah, that, I mean, I've actually got some of the statistics here. It says... You can tell me. It's five Missing hours. children... Uh, you're right, yeah. Missing children statistics in South Africa. A child goes missing every five hours in South Africa. According to figures released by the South African Police Service Missing uh, Persons Bureau, this adds up to a total of 1,697 children a year. Um, according to Missing Children South Africa statistics, 77% of children are found... 
Sadly, this still leaves us with at least 23% of the children being either never found, trafficked, or found deceased. Uh, children are also the most vulnerable victims of gender-based violence. And then I've just got some murder statistics here as well. Uh, how many kids are killed in South Africa every day? At least three children are murdered. Another three survive attempted murder. And 21 suffer grievous bodily harm. That's the average daily impact of violence against children in South Africa. And then just murder statistics in general. How many, mur uh, how many murders are there in a day in South Africa? There's roughly 77. The crime statistics indicate that 6,945 people were murdered between July and September 2023, um, or roughly 77 people every single day. Further to this, 13,090 people suffered sexual assault, while 42,297 others were seriously assaulted. Now that's it. Yesterday, five children got missing. Today, five children are going to get missing. That's that's our reality here. Now, when people tell you this, this is this, there's this secret veil over ritual killings in South Africa, a veil that I'm about to blow open, because the people that benefit from this body part muti are the some of them are top. Cops. Some of them are top law enforcement officers. Some of them are top prosecutors. They use this type of thing. So how do you fight what you benefit from? So I'm saying to you, I'm about... There's good San Gomas, I'm told, that, that pray and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know much about that world. I actually yeah. visited a San the other day. Is it? I was. I did a full ceremony with them, yeah. Yes, but there, was, there, 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 there are people that there's a gift to see, I'm told. Mm. But I don't believe in Sangomas. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I respect their but culture, people their beliefs. Can do but it, but I, yeah, when your really. culture involves killing children. Yeah. I think, so the way There's I, a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a difference. So I think generally Sangomas uh, are very peaceful. They don't do any of that. They don't practice any of that kind of stuff. Yes. I think there's like dark... Witch, witches, there's, witchcraft. Yeah, dark witchcraft, magic and that yeah. kind of stuff. I might be mistaken. I know it's more complex and I, 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 I've only learned about this recently, but those people are not respected and they are not considered real Sangomas. Yes, no, that's true. Yeah. I spoke, also spoke to a Sangoma that told me the very same thing. But I'm saying to you, I'm coming after those ritual murder people. Mm. We have a team delving deep and we're going to bring out names of people. We're going to bring out people that's very high up in the police. We're going to bring out people that's very high up in government very high up politicians that are part of this nonsense. We are, we need to be sure of our facts. That's why it's going to take us a little bit longer than what we anticipated because mm. we want to prove it beyond concrete. Any doubt. Yeah. I am saying to you, nobody gets, how can so many people go, so many kids get missing? We had a child now in PE, his body parts, what was left of his body parts were found. Of course, it's a ritual murder. What happens to those people? The reason why they get to go, don't get arrested because they got political cover. They got political protection. They got police cover. They got police protection. Mm -hmm. And I, Gaten McKenzie, is going to lead. I'm not scared of this witches. They must be witch me. I'm not scared of them. Usually I would disagree because this does sound ridiculous. But I know in, I think in, in many places in Asia and stuff, I'm sure it happens in a lot of other countries, very, very wealthy people, politicians, businessmen do get like the rhino horn, right? Because they believe it gives them a bigger erection mm. or they do um, the elephant mm. penis or whatever it is. You know what I mean? It, it, they have like these weird beliefs that it's going to increase your sexual prowess or whatever they call it. Um, so I, I do believe that probably there's very successful or uh, influential people in South Africa that do believe in this kind With of stuff. money. Yeah. And we, for as long as we don't fight the ritual murders, the unspoken thing in South Africa is ritual murders. As long as we do, because people are scared that the witches are going to bewitch them. That's why they want to fight them. People would go for promotion or to win an election. They will get this type of special muti that consists of human blood. It's ridiculous. Albinos in Tanzania. Sure, I know they get hunted. In, they get hunted. Yeah. Uh, 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 people with the color of Jocelyn get hunted. I am saying to you, I'm going to be the one that's going to expose this nonsense. Mm. I don't I'm think, one I mean, that is not yeah. scared. I think that's probably a small reason. I think children go missing and people go missing for many different reasons. But I could see how that could be a, 
uh, the, the percentage of, of but it. But I yeah. personally think, don't think Jocelyn is, 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 is there's anything ritual murders about Jocelyn. What do you think happened to Jocelyn? I think Jocelyn has been trafficked. People don't understand how big child trafficking is. Well, I, I heard that they send kids on the container ships. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something. People Jocelyn on the container is, ships. You, you get, you get. Jocelyn is the, a platinum princess for, 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 for. She's got beautiful eyes and. No, the the problem uh, is that you can. She can fit in in Europe. She can fit in. Yeah. In, 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 in Ukraine. She can fit in in Russia. Nobody's gonna look twice. Jocelyn when she walks in Russia. Mm. Nobody will look twice Jocelyn when she walks in Spain. No. Now those are the perfect people that can blend in for child trafficking. So when they sell the child, she blends in, she doesn't, people will be like, what is this child doing here? Must I call the cops? Mm. No. Yes. Because she's light-skinned, she's yes. got beautiful blue eyes. And she can pass as any race. Yeah. So, like she, she wouldn't, uh, she wouldn't stand out in many but places. But we're gonna find her. But um, so so you reckon she was trafficked, right? I reckon that's my opinion. And how do people get trafficked in South Africa? How do people get trafficked out of the country? Do you Just, know uh, any of because the we don't have borders. Yeah. We have no borders. It comes down to the first thing I said. So you're saying they could have just crossed the river. They would have crossed the river, and from there, it's gone somewhere else. Because somewhere no one's else. looking for Jocelyn in Zimbabwe, for no example. No one is looking for her in, in Zimbabwe. No one is looking for her in the place next to Zimbabwe. Nobody's mm. looking for her. So what I'm saying is, Lex borders makes all crimes possible. And have you heard about the, the container ships thing that I said? Yes, I've that, heard about that, that. That people are being smuggled in container ships. I think by the time this podcast comes out, we are also following a lead that Jocelyn has been. By the time this comes out, we would have had an answer to, is that so successful? <sighs> I couldn't imagine being, I mean, because I, I was thinking about the container ships the other day. I saw a video on TikTok of someone talking about it. And it's just like, imagine being, I don't even know how you survive something like that. I mean, crossing like 30 days on the ocean, <laughs> open ocean in a container where it's like blistering heat. No, I mean, I, I just don't understand how they People, do it. You know, I saw the most heartbreaking thing the other day where a father whose child has been, he knows where his child was. His child has been taken by Hamas. And the father said... They Wait, in Israel? Yeah, from Israel mm. to Palestine. And the father said he prays that his child must rather be dead instead of his child enduring. That hit me so hard. Now, if your child get, That is the mind of a person that has lost... The child has been kidnapped. You start thinking like, Lord, take her to you where she's saved by you instead of her being used as a child sex slave. People don't want to talk about child sex slave industry is a big industry in this world. Ritual murders is a big industry in this world. And we need to talk and expose this type of stuff. I mean, I've, I just watched another documentary about Nickelodeon. Have you, do you know what that is? No. Nickelodeon is a TV channel. It I know like, Nickelodeon, but I don't know. It's a kid's channel that I grew up with. You yes. know Nickelodeon. And um, I mean, the amount of sexual abuse that goes on even in the open is crazy towards kids. Now, that's what I'm saying. We need to fight this whole thing of, you know, when a child gets kidnapped, it is, it is, listen, Josh, man, it doesn't make sense where a child gets missing every five hours. Mm -mm. It's, it, it speaks to leadership of this country. It speaks to law and order in this country. Because you know what I like about the Jocelyn matter? There's something I do like. Kidnappers now know we are looking for our kids when they get missing. Kidnappers now know it will no longer be a file. There will be a community like Middle Post community, like Saldana community. There will be, Jocelyn has, has broken every race thing you might have in your mind. Black people are praying for her, colored people, Indian people, people outside this country. Everybody wants Jocelyn back. So I'm saying to you, the good thing for me that came out of that, it is highlighted. We love our children even more now. You check your kids, where, where are you? Don't play too far. Mm, I see my it, brother with his son. He doesn't it, let him get two meters away. It desensitized all of us. Yeah. It has sensitized all of us. You know, some, uh, my uh, friend was telling me that his wife was always paranoid about her children. He's now more paranoid. But we're going to fix mm -hmm. our country. I hope so. I read something in an article that was talking about you meeting her, uh, Jocelyn. It said, 
Um, in a Facebook post, Kate McKenzie reflected on meeting Kelly shortly after Jocelyn Smith's disappearance on the 19th of February. The PA leader shared a meal with the woman um, and her two children and spoiled them with new clothes, cell phones, and emotional support. He also paid for a safe house for Kelly and her boyfriend to live in and had his personal bodyguards watch over them, which he said. During this time, Kelly admitted that both she and her partner regularly abused the, uh, the drug Tuck, uh, which is crystal meth. According to Gayton, Kelly and Berta's drug addiction was likely behind the allegations of them selling Jocelyn. Uh, Gayton, Gayton also said that he thinks they sold Jocelyn for drugs. I think so. You know, people don't understand two things. I know when I meet the addict, Jocelyn, uh, it's very incentive to ask uh, Jocelyn's mom, Kelly, it's very incentive to ask a woman, are you a drug addict that has just lost a baby? Mm. But I did that because I knew she, she I wanted to see if she's going to lie to me because I saw the movement of her hand. I saw how she looks at me. I noticed things. And and I got a cell phone. I got her money to buy a cell phone because I wanted uh, to trace her. You know, because she told me she doesn't have a cell phone at the moment. The cell phone is not working. And I said, you know what? How are you going to trace this woman? You want to know who she's calling. You, uh, that's what suspects do. They call in people like, oh, sus or oh, the person bought Jocelyn, like, don't talk about me and stuff like that. And 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 if, if if we didn't keep her in a safe house, the cops wouldn't have found her. In fact, it was a hotel. It wasn't even a safe house. If we didn't pay for that evening for her to be there, she would have been gone. And then with our cops, they might never have found her. All I'm saying is that we're not going to stop looking for Jocelyn. We... Are not going to stop. We have made sure that children get found now. The cops, in the time that Jocelyn has been gone, we found four kids. Now the cops know how to work. But I do know that we don't have a missing children's unit. Something I'm going to bring in, that I brought into mm -hmm. my manifesto. That we need a missing children's unit. And you might think your child will not go missing. You never know. It happens with the best of us. Yeah, I mean, I, w I don't have kids, but... I would be nervous. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Uh, not just that. There's a lot of other things I'd be nervous for. But um, just just to end this off, it says there was a bit of you got quite a bit of criticism as well for doing uh, this. What you like going on the search and and interfering, I guess, in the case. It says so. Uh, the criticism it says here, Gaten revealed he had taken a step back amid criticism from authorities that he was interfering with the investigation. In a media briefing on Friday, Western Cape Minister of Police Oversight and Community Safety, Regan Allen, who we were talking about earlier, condemned individuals politicizing their assistance to the community. Um, he said, I am deeply alarmed at the manner in which this tragic matter has been politicized. Individuals and groups should refrain from this practice. It is highly immoral and insensitive to the friends, family, loved ones, and the wider community. Um, so do you, do you think that is valid criticism or no? No. Let me tell you what is highly moral. You did moral. mention it this earlier though, but... Let me tell you what is highly moral. This is Regan Allen. Let me tell you what is highly moral. It's when a child is missing and you don't go with the minister of, responsible for safety and security for a whole week. When a child is missing and you don't send helicopters, boats, and don't blame the, the SEPs. Because you have a budget. What are you doing with the four billion that you guys get a year? It's highly immoral. Only bringing the helicopters and stuff after Gaten McKenzie has said he's going to pay for those helicopters and for those boats and for mm -hmm. private detectives. That's what highly moral is. Being tasked with keeping people safe. And you don't do that. Today, the suspects that they have, the community and Gaten McKenzie took those suspects to them. If we didn't catch the suspects, they told me they can't find Stefano to come and do a lie detector test. I went out immediately, live, bringing them Stefano. They didn't know where Buddha and Kelly was. I gave them Buddha and Kelly. Is that interfering or is that assisting? They the ones politicizing, I'm a father before I'm a politician. If I didn't go there, this case would have been closed. Kelly mm -hmm. would have been out in five years, she would have sold the next kid. And the other daughter that's there. But because Gaten McKenzie arrived, now they have to work. This is the renting of a man that must now for the first that has been exposed for doing nothing. How many kids, what? He must just show me one thing. 
of all the missing children in Cape Town, this Regan Allen must show me how many parents has he visited. Let him show me there, pr- before Jocelyn. And I will show him how many children Gaten McKenzie visited of parents. How many parents of children missing did I visit? And I'm not even being paid for it. I don't even have a budget for it. I'm not even the minister of safety and security like him. <clears throat> he gets driven around to keep us safe. So he mustn't come talk nonsense. Absolute mm. nonsense he's speaking. Nobody will tell me. They do files when children are missing. He said one press conference to tell people that I haven't been charged for kidnapping. But he's never informed the people how far the case is with Jocelyn. He's never told us the progress like cops are supposed to do. He has never asked the community. The very community that helped to search for Jocelyn, that did more than me, more than him. That community did more than me. They did more than him. You know what is he what did he do? He kept them out of court. The people that searched day and night. People that walked in bushes where there's snakes. People that didn't eat. People that had, that needed treatment. And they didn't have their tablets on them. And they asked just to sit so that they can gain more strength. Mm. And they refused to go home. What he did, he couldn't even allow them to go into court. Mm. I don't know anything about that. No, I, I'm telling yeah, you. I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying I I'm don't. Telling yeah. you. <laughs> I'm telling you that's yeah. like that. So he can go to the nearest hell. And do you, but do you agree that, and I'm not saying this is, I'm not putting this on you, mm. right? Because people kind of put it on me as well in a way they say that, because I talk about very sensitive topics and topics that I, a white guy shouldn't really talk about, I guess, in this country. That I think that's how people see it, right? And they say, oh, you're doing it for viewership or this or that. Or I mean, there's if you look at my other videos before I started doing this kind of stuff, they got away more viewership and it was way more advertiser friendly, right? So it, it, yeah, I know people put, often put things on you that isn't true and no one can know your intentions. No one can know my intentions. Uh, you kind of just have to go with what we say, right? Um, but do you, do you agree that politicians in South Africa, especially around election times, tend to suddenly focus on things a lot more. Like there was the the fire that happened in that building in Joburg, for instance, and suddenly every politician was on the scene. And do, do you think that they do that? Or? Yeah, they do that. I for agree sure. with you. Yeah. There's a woman called Chance. When they accused me of doing this for political reasons, she brought out a private conversation me and her had last year where her daughter was missing and I said to her, I'm sending my bodyguards now to come and help with the search. I'm overseas, I'll be back next week to come and help. The child was found. I've never spoken about it. There's a woman in George, four, three, four weeks ago, mm. contacted me. Her daughter was missing. We found the daughter in Ozura. You don't see me going around and, ah, I found the daughter. I delivered the daughter to the mother. Yeah. So this is not the first time that we are doing this. It's the first time we get this type of publicity. Yeah. And I'm saying to you, if and interfering, you were there. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, if interfering, all the suspects they have there, I highlighted, I brought them to them. Mm. Is that interfering? That's not interfering. Why, if I interfere, why did the cops come to me? They interfered with my lunch when they asked me, with my breakfast, when they asked me, where can they find Bhutan Kelly? They, they interfered with that. When I went there, they too, I thought this is a normal case of a missing child. I never knew it's going to blow up like this. So that's the one thing that I was, that I was going to say as well, is that it did kind of only really blow up after you got there. Yes. So... Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of agree with what it's you're politics. saying. It's yeah, politics. They're yeah. the ones playing politics because I can't help when people say... Either way, though. Yeah. Either but way. But it's a job of a politician. But e- either way, whether you've done it for political reasons or not political reasons, mm. you've still gone and helped Definitely. look for a missing child. You're right. It but doesn't matter, That's really. a smart thing that you just said because yeah. I say to people, and I'm a father also. We mustn't forget that. I'm a dad before mm. I'm a politician. The last thing I want to talk about is... Israel and Palestine, right? The reason I wanted to talk about it was because I saw a clip of you and Mr. Steenhazen. John Steenhazen isn't actually in this clip. I've cut him out. It's just your answer to the question. It was part of a debate. Um, And let me just play that here before we talk about it even more. 
Dayton, Mc Dayton McKenzie, do you want to see a free and sovereign Palestine? Right. Uh, the, I, I, I think they lie when they say white men can't dance. John has been dancing around the question, yeah. Uh, He's not been answering the question. Let me show him how I, you answer you, the question. You, yeah. No, let me answer the question. Number one, there's no genocide happening there. Number two, no, so, hear me so, out, so, let me answer so when, you. When children are starving, that's No, let genocide. me answer you. Don't tell me how I should answer you. Number two, let me tell you something. If I'm the president of this country, and let's say Lesotho comes here and they take hostages and they take children, and I will bomb Lesotho, and if they want peace, they must return the children. Nothing tells you about peace. And if I become president, I will stop that case of the ICJ, simply because the Honorable Minister pursues Israel. Yesterday, 22 people are shot here in Mrs. Plain, more than, the IC, more, than, more than in Ramallah, in Palestine. They are wearing scarves of Palestine, while our people die here, more than Palestine. Today they say we must be enemy, Jewish people are the enemy. I grew up poor. It was a Jewish woman in Operation Hunger that was giving us food. It was the Jewish people that went to Mandela to jail. So nobody will tell me Hamas is a terrorist organization that should be destroyed totally. That's my stance. Hate me or love me. That guy's face at the end. Um, so I want to know from you what your perspective is. And I know you kind of said it there, but that was obviously very, and it was a debate, it was intense. And I, I, I've just seen on a lot of different platforms, um, politicians, their words have been twisted a lot and they haven't really been given much time to kind of flesh out everything. So I just want to know from you, how do you feel about what has been happening there, the history uh, and what's what's currently going on? All right, no, thank you. I mean, I think I'm going to give you the... Answer I've never given anybody because I'm going to have a chance to explain to you. I think that I grew up hating Israel. I grew up believing that Israel is a apartheid state. I then went to Israel. And I realized the first thing that I said when I came back from Israel or when I was in Israel was, by calling Israel an apartheid state, you're minimizing the pain of black people, what we went through what my father has gone through, my mom has gone through. Israel has its problems. It's not a perfect state, but it's definitely not a part of the state. Don't compare Israel to South Africa and what black people has gone through. You are making light of what we've gone through if you are saying that. And the reason why I'm saying that is that I have seen, we were not allowed in parliament uh, before the tricameral system. Uh, I've seen... Arab people being in the parliament, in the Neset, which is the Israeli parliament. I've, I bought medicine from a pharmacist that is a Palestinian guy in, in Israel. Ramallah, uh, Palestine, and, and Israel, and this is my stance, I believe that a two-state solution is the answer. I believe that Palestinians should live in in, 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 in in Palestine and Israelis should live in Israel. Basically, that's what I believe, as it is now. Now, the problem comes in that people don't want to talk about. My friends believe white people stole the land in South Africa. As friends of mine, they believe that. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the history, it's true. The land was stolen. The land belonged to our forefathers. That's the fact. So the reason why I say my friends, because I want to put myself in this. What did we do in South Africa? We found a compromise. So I am asking for the very same thing that has happened to us to happen in Israel and Palestine. But there's a problem. When you start chanting from the river to the sea, you are giving credits to, I think, Hamas point number five in the charter, which says the total annihilation of Jewish people. That's what Hamas says. You can Google it now. It's right there. So when you say from the river to the sea, Palestine shall be free, 
You include the areas where Jewish people also love. So I'm saying life is about compromise. Do you think it's only uh, the killing comes from both sides? Israel is not innocent. Uh, Hamas is also not innocent. Do you know that 20% of the rockets that they are sending land in, in, in Gaza? But here's the issue. Let's take emotion out of the thing. Mm. That's it. I don't want to debate it. No, I, I want just, to... Yeah, yeah. Just, just the chat. I'm saying yeah. to you that. The only solution, you're not going to get... Jewish people are never going to move from, from, from an area that they feel is their homeland. Palestinian people are not going to give up uh, Palestine. Mm. If Benjamin Netanyahu thinks he's going to get rid of Palestinians, it's never going to happen. No. It's, it's fool's thinking if he, if he thinks that. I'm saying, let's have a compromise. When the Jewish people in South Africa had a memorial service for the Jews that was killed in October 7, I was one of the speakers there. And you can go back and I can send it to you. I said at that gathering, I said to the Jewish people who, who were in pain at that moment, I said, the Palestinians are not your enemies. Don't put this on the Palestinian people. Have sympathy where a child is a Palestinian, where a child is Israeli. If a child dies, have absolute sympathy. I don't look at his nationality before I decide how am I going to feel about a child dying. So the children that dies in Palestine hurts me as much as the children dying in Israel, which brings me to my main point. Who am I? I'm a leader in South Africa. Who voted for me? South Africans. When I became a leader, I put my hand on the Bible when I was sworn as a mayor a few years ago, two years ago, whatever. I was a mayor for a year. And I said, I will protect the interest of South Africans. And I'll put South Africans first. More people are dying in the Western Cape than in Palestine. More people are dying. Over what period of time, though? Any period of time. Do you know that in the past four weeks, 200 people died in Mitchell's plane alone. I was actually there the other day. Uh, 200 people. Yeah. I was I was talking to one of the members of the community that I've worked done quite a lot of work with, and he was too scared to even talk on camera yeah. about what's been going on. 200 people died. Now, let me tell you, mm. as a politician, as a leader, my allegiance is first to my people. People might not want to like this. Now, what angers me and why I'm raising my voice is that politicians are wearing Palestinian scarves. Politicians are saying that Israel is denying water to the Palestinians. They're saying they deny electricity to Palestinians. I think they were at one point. I'm not saying they didn't. Yeah. But what I'm saying is a different point. I'm saying they are denying water to us in South Africa. They are denying, the very same people sympathizing with Israel, are denying, sympathizing with Palestine, are denying us water, are denying us electricity. Now, you know, you need to lower your voice when it comes to accusing people of stuff that you are unable to provide and that you are getting paid and you are elected to provide for. I'm going to repeat that. As a leader that gets paid, to provide electricity and to provide water, you better lower your voice in criticizing others that you deem guilty of doing the stuff that you are guilty of. You have no moral standing, no moral authority. They spend two billion rent to take Israel to the ICJ. ICJ. I think. Two billion. Yeah. They can't spend 100 million to send the army in Menembek. They can't spend 100 million to send the army into Westbury, but they spend 2 billion for the Palestinian cause. I am saying that they have no moral standing. They, South Africa has always been the country that is the referee of the world when it comes to peacemaking. They have lost that. I'm not saying the Israelis are right or the Palestinians are right. Mm. I don't even know whose land that really is, to be honest with you. I think both sides do have a claim, though. Yes, to the but land, I yeah. do know. White South Africans has a claim to this land. Black South Africans have a claim to this land. 
my people, the colored people say, rightly so, we are the indigenous people of South Africa. This is our land. But life doesn't work like that. A time mm. comes now where... We're I, all here. We're, we're all, all here now. Yeah, we have yeah, to make it here. work. Yeah. If we go back in history, I can prove to you, unlike in Palestine, in, 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 in Israel, I can prove to you that this land belongs to the indigenous people. The Khoisan. The Khoisan. Yeah. I can prove to you that. The, the United Nations has accepted that we are the first nation mm. of this land. But even us don't have the right anymore to say to black people and to white people like yourself, no, 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 this is our land from the river to the sea. It's our land. That's not how the world works. So what we have done here, Gaten McKenzie wants the same day. I want the killings to stop because Israel is killing babies and, and Hamas is killing babies on Israel's side. I'm not going to be the ones that want to be popular and wear a Palestinian scarf as if the hostages, you know, and here's the uncomfortable truth. Josh, if you take my kids hostage, or you kidnap my kids and you bring them in this big house we're sitting in, and your father is hiding my kids together with you and your mother, and I say it respectfully, I will not only kill you, I will kill your mom, your father, everybody under this roof. If you don't want them, me to come for them, return my kids. My uncles were killed by the apartheid regime. My friends were killed by the apartheid regime. My friends' families have been killed by the apartheid regime. But we sat around the table. Why can't we... We couldn't get everything. That's why we said, let's share the land. Hope. Hope is a 10-year-old girl in which was playing. She was playing in the play park at school during break. She got shot through the head. Mm. There's nothing self-inflicted about the death of Hope. Every day our people die. Go to Westbury. We've just buried a pharmacist. That brings medicine to the community. We've buried the guy the other day, McCabe, that totally transformed his life. We bury children in our community. Do you know how irresponsible it will make me to go and shout from the river to the sea while the people that I'm responsible for primarily are dying and I say nothing. And that's what our leaders are doing. They fight for the Palestinians. But the South African people need their leaders. We elect leaders to champion our causes, to fight for us. So you want to come for Gaten because I value the task that has been given to me to protect South Africans first. I put my hand on the Bible for that. So I'm saying there's no innocent people here. But we need to cool our temperatures. We need to stop our biases. We need to sit down around the table and find a solution. And you can hate me for that, but it's just my truth. I'm passionate about South Africans because I don't want to be the president of Palestine. I don't want to be the president of, of Prime Minister of Israel. I want to be the president of South Africa. So I'm going to put South Africans' issues first. And, and if... if, 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 if the only advice I have for Israel and for, for the Palestine is sit around the table like we are sitting around the table. Anyway, Gaten, thank you so much for coming down today. Uh, this actually went on a lot longer than I was expecting, but I've really enjoyed speaking to you. And thank you so much again for coming down uh, and spending your time here. I really appreciate it. Salut. Thank you very much. Cool. And Thanks thank you everyone for watching. I know it's been a while since we have done a podcast. I've been working very hard on my documentaries. You guys really seem to be enjoying them. And uh, yeah, definitely going to arrange some more podcasts within the next few weeks and uh, some cool documentaries as well. So stay tuned. Cheers. Thank you very much.